Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today on this episode. Sit back and relax as we go into the Valley Oasis, an 18 by 24 inch vertical canvas. Let's get started. Thank you for joining me today. Today we have a 18 by 24 inch canvas laid vertically. I have already primed the canvas with some of the liquid white up here that just allows you to mix right on the canvas rather than having to mix on the palette. I pre-covered the bottom with black gesso and a gesso is a water base that allows you to just make the canvas dark. So I, I'm going to try this contrast today with a light sky and then a dark foreground. I've also laid some sap green and Van Dyke brown, which are transparent colors on the bottom here, which you'll see later on when we do water. For now, let's just do a very simple sky. I'm taking some phthalo blue into my brush, into my large two inch brush here. Let's just do a simple sky. As you can see, I've tapped some color into the brush here. I'm just going to work in some X color here, starting at the top, laying this blue in here, and then crisscross strokes, allowing it to pick up more of the liquid white as it gets down farther and farther, obviously becoming lighter in value. Very simple sky here. Nothing hard about it. Nice blue. And just that easy, you have a simple blue sky. Only takes a few seconds. Crossing over. Very simple, nothing hard about it. If we want, we can add some clouds in to add a little bit of mystery. Let's see, for that I will use I'm gonna add some liquid white into the clouds here. Let's add some midnight black. No, we'll add some white in with a fan brush. So just by adding some paint in, you can make some clouds here if we wish. I'm just interested about the top part of the cloud. I don't care about the bottom yet. We will have a mountain today, so I'm just interested about the top half here. Blending this into the blue. Let's take a clear, dry two and a half inch brush here. And I'm just swirling these clouds in. I'm not gonna kill all of the top lines. I want those to remain fairly fluffed up here. I'm using the brush to fluff up the tips of these clouds. So that kind of sets up a little bit of an atmosphere here. Very simple, nothing hard about it. I'm going 
gonna mix up a mountain color. Taking out my palette knife for one of them. Let's use this one. This is a palette knife. It's a tool that I use quite a bit. And what that does is it just allows the paint to become quite thick when I need it to be and quite thin when I need it to be. I'm going to take some Van Dyke Brown, some Lizard and Crimson, a little bit of black, a little bit of blue. I'm just mixing up a nice color here, a dark color. Cleaning off the uh, knife with some paper towel. Now I'm going to try this today. right-handed even though I am left-handed I'm going to try it right-handed today just for something more difficult and maybe the camera can see it a little bit better so I'm going to have a mountain up here let's cut the mountain in I'm just interested in the peak in itself, bringing this down. Let's make a second peak over here. I want these mountains to be off to the left a little bit rather than centered. I don't want them centered today. Now I'm going to switch to my left hand to fill in this part. Scraping off the excess paint. Again, I'm just interested in the top part, top peak, so to speak. What happens with the rest we really don't care about. You can go as high as you want with your peak or as low as you want. It's completely up to you how you design your mountains. Don't copy, don't follow a formula, just be interested in that top peak line. Go with the lay of the land. That's good for now. Take a clean, dry two and a half inch brush and just start to pull. Think about the shape of the mountain. Start to pull down the top and the bottom here and blend. And obviously as it goes into the uh, liquid white, you can see how it pushes the mountain back into a fog here. See how easy that is? So we have a basic mountain shape here. And again, what's really neat is at any point, if I decide, I can say, hey, I want another mountain peak. And that easily, just by putting a roll of paint here, I can create another mountain. really easy in your world to create whatever you want.
just that simple. You can landscape in, literally landscape, in a new mountain peak. Look how easy that is. Isn't that easy? It's so powerful, this technique. Just maneuvering the paint. And then from there, let's make a highlight today, but I'm not going to do a snow. I'm going to do... I'm going to use the palette knife. I'm going to take some burnt sienna and some white. Create a nice highlight, maybe a little touch of alizarin crimson just to flavor it a bit. Just creating a nice brownish color, but I'm also leaving it marbled. This is kind of the color I'm looking for here. It's kind of a light brown mountain color. Now I'm going to reverse this again because I'm doing it right-handed today. I'm left-handed naturally, so for me to do things with my right hand is a bit of a challenge. But I like that idea. Putting a small roll of paint here on the knife. Small roll of brown paint. And then very gently I'm just going to start to highlight these by allowing the paint to break where it would naturally. Barely touching. Barely touching the canvas. Allowing the paint to break. Forming it with the mountain here. Adding in these highlights. Wherever you think the sun might hit. Barely touching. Maybe this mountain comes down here. Cuts across peak here. I love this mountain technique because you can never do the same mountain twice. Following the lay of the land. But you can see how I'm following the strokes. If you go down to the right, don't change the angle at the last minute. Stay with that angle. Now if you want to make a little shadow color, you just take the same color and darken it. But it has to be lighter than what's there. So I'm using a kind of a grayish brown. And then I can apply a small a little bit down here 
changing the angle a touch. I don't want to kill a lot of that dark on the mountain. Taking this two and a half inch brush, it's clean and dry. Just diffusing the bottom, which will push it back and make it foggy looking. Kills the details. See how you want the bottom of the mountain to be much more diffused, much softer. Got a hair there, so I'm going to clean that off. Had to ch fix that little line there because it was definitely off. And that's simple. You have a set of light brown mountains. Let's use some sap green. A little bit of yellow here. It's kind of a light green color. Lots of paint on the brush. Adding in some foothills. So thinking about the lay of the land. Now we have two choices. You could have the trees coming in from the right or the left up the mountain. I think I'm going to allow the trees to drape down this way. So think about where the tree line would go up the mountain and stop. For the tree line, they're not able to grow any longer. And then maybe some come up this way a little bit. Again, go with the lay of the land here. So by adding this green color, it's just allowing this to crawl up the edge of the mountain as a tree line would. What that does is it just starts to set the mountains back a little bit. Now I'm going to use the same brush to make this next layer darker. As you come closer, the value changes and the mountains get darker.
filling this in with the sap green again pushes the other layers back. See how easy that is though to create these nice green foothills. Again, I'm going with the angle of the mountain. So you can see those giant green rolling hills allowing the mountain to sit now in the base of the valley. Now if we want, we can take fan brush and start to add in the next layer. Again I'm using dark sap green, Van Dyke brown. I want this really a dark color. Adding it into the fan brush here. You can see this is quite loaded with a dark color. Let's add some pine trees. So from here, these are the closer trees, so they're going to have a bit more detail on them. Take a few minutes. Starting to think about the way the land is going to create. So you can see the details on the tops. Most of this will be covered, but we put it anyway. Make sure the tree line does not remain uniform. You want the tree line to be very inconsistent. So I want to make sure that Again, I'm only concerned about the very top line. I want it to look like thousands of trees here. Big pine forest coming down, bringing the eye into the foreground more. And then occasionally you go in with some super dark like that, see? This camera picking that up. And pulling these down. Sorry if my hand's in the way. Apologize. And by me changing the color from brown to green it gives it more depth because the trees are not going to be the exact same color on the way up and down they're going to have different different values and different hues here 
you could spend hours on this it's your world create it however you want you may have noticed at the beginning of this painting that the song changed. Did you notice that from episode to episode? What happened was the old song, the old intro in the first couple of painting episodes was a song from a Harry Potter movie. And it was called uh, A Window to the Past, one of my favorite compositions. Can you guess who composed it? Probably the most famous composer in movies today. You guessed it, John Williams. John Williams is the Mozart of our day as far as movie composition. Everyone who composes music, myself included, who does compose, uh, John Williams is the master. He's the guy that started with Spielberg, has done Everything from Jaws to E.T. to Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Harry Potter, you name it, he's done it. He is Spielberg's official composer. And when I heard that song, I had not seen that Harry Potter movie. I think it was The Prisoner of Azkaban, or however you pronounce it, I didn't see it. But I heard that piano piece with that flute or oboe whatever it was and I fell in love with that song I'm like whoa, whoa where did this come from I don't know where I heard it it was probably on the internet and again I had no association with it with Harry Potter I said gosh that sounds amazing who did that what is this song and it just captivated me it was so haunting and that's the one you hear at the beginning of the series well, what happened was, good old YouTube, uh, it has algorithms which pick up notes and things, and it was telling me that it was a strike, not a strike, it was a um, copyright violation. And it just, you, you just get a notice and it says, you know, uh, the video has a copyright violation, a window to the past is owned by John Williams basically telling me to take it down which I did and what I did in its place as you heard at the beginning of this video is I composed a very short guitar piece of my acoustic guitar I like to paint but I like to do music much more so I said well what the heck I'll just do a little original piece so that guitar piece at the beginning intro is me playing an acoustic guitar just basically one chord I'm just arpeggiating around it it's just two tracks it took me about 15 minutes to make really a simple little piece but that way I won't get a copyright violation because I'm the creator <laughs> so no one's gonna bother me since I own the music now Uh, I've done 31 albums of music, I think, so far. 31 CDs I've created of music of my own. All original. So I've written about 600 different songs. Uh, and I like to compose music inspired by people like John Williams and uh, you name it, any type of composer from movies I love. And when I hear something like Window to the Past, I'm just uh, so inspired by it that it makes me want to go out and create even more. I have a CD I did called Drawing Steel. 
which is about 16 orchestral pieces that I composed. And that was heavily inspired by the movie Braveheart. I think I think that James Horner did the soundtrack to Braveheart. Sadly, I think he died. Uh, but that is pretty much battle type music, uh, orchestral horns, strings. Good for gaming if you like to play D and D or. Uh, WoW or any of those games or you do any type of board game really and you like to uh, have background music Drawing Steel would be a good good CD for that that was quite a while ago and I've done many compositions since but the movie Braveheart is a fantastic soundtrack best soundtrack I've ever heard was uh, Conan the Barbarian the original 1980, whatever that was, by Basil Pouladouris. He was without a doubt one of my favorite composers. Sadly, he's dead now too. But most of that movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, was a quiet, is almost a silent film. There wasn't a lot of dialogue to that movie. The music carried it completely, and the scenes with James O. Jones. And the, the riding of the horses and the spear battle at the end and the magician Mako, all these cool characters and the archer and Valeria, his girlfriend, all those characters from that movie were driven by that score by Basil. And you guys know when you watch a movie how much, how important the music is. So I hope that you enjoy the new intro because it's going to stay. And you can get a... I have emails from people. You can get my music through the website or you can get it on Amazon or um, CD Baby makes CDs of mine. You can find it all over the internet. You can download it. But back to the painting. So let's see. We have simple tree line here. Now let's start to add some large pines. Now there's many ways you can do pine trees. You can do them with a fan brush, which is the common way. Today, I think I'll try something a little bit new. It's a half size brush. We have a half size round. Don't know if that will be able to make pine trees. Don't know if I have an oval brush. I'm just looking for a specific brush here, so bear with me. One of these might work. I think if I can get this really thin, it will work. So I'm going to try using this brush today for something different. This is called a half size round Bob Ross brush. Uh, and I'm going to put a ton of paint on it. So we're going to use that same dark color. I'm just loading it with sap green, Van Dyke brown, some black here. Just want a really dark color. Super dark. Loading the brush full of paint. And then I'm going to pull this to an edge. I don't know if this is going to work. This is an experiment. Pulling the brush kind of to an edge here. What I'm going to do though is take my fan brush and start the top of the tree. How about I do one with the fan brush and with the round and you tell me what you like better. Start up here with the fan. Start to create a pine tree here. OK, 
Can you see it? Need dark, 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 dark color here. So that's one with fan brush. Looks okay. Let's do one with this large brush and see how it turns out. Let's come up here and make one. I'm just using the fan brush to put in where I'm going to put the tree. Using just the very corner here. Obviously this makes a much softer tree, doesn't it? Maybe it's not really a pine, maybe it's some sort of hemlock or elm. So that makes a much more soft tree. Not bad, it's very... I like the way it pokes through the sky here. Let's make another next to it. Let's put one here. Get them switching back and forth between the two brushes, getting the dark color with the green. Using the very corner here. I like that, it's nice and soft. Let's put one more over here. Try to use my right hand as much as I can today so I don't block your view. Now I'm just going to lay in some dark uh, foreground here. I'm going to take a line of brush. Let's get some liquid clear. Liquid clear is basically oil and it just makes the paint thinner. Thinning the paint out allows it to stick to a thick paint. So if you want to layer your paint or you want to layer highlights under dark color, add liquid clear or liquid white or even paint thinner will work to thin the paint. I'm just going to create a couple tree trunks here in white so they stick out. Most of this will be covered up. I'm going to dull that down. It's a little too bright. After all, these aren't birch trees. That's better. That's more of a, a nice uh, brown. And I'll highlight these in a minute so you'll see how they'll get covered up. Most of these will get covered. But some of this would stick through. 
All this does is give the tree a little bit of a base to sit on. And you can put these anywhere you want. Adding as much detail as you wish. And then let's take a fan brush and use, pardon me, I'm going to get some liquid white. And let's go into this nice light green color I'm using cad yellow, sap green, just a nice light green yellow highlight. I don't want to highlight these too much, but a little bit. Sun's coming from the right, so just a touch. Occasionally breaks up the monotony of the tree. more on the right because that's where the sun is hitting than on the left. Can you see that on the camera? Is it picking it up? I hope so. A little bit of highlight here. Not too much. Again, going with the shape of the branches. Does the camera show that? I think it does. It's showing up here. Just creating a bit of a grassy mount, a uh, grassy hill here. I'm using the same color, same brush. Working it light to dark, light to dark. Now let's do some magic. Using a clear, clean two and a half inch brush. Has to be clean and dry. Paper towel is your friend with these techniques, so I recommend you get several rolls to keep near you. Okay, I'm just grabbing straight white here. This is creating water. Just adding a bit more yellow green to it.
and that easy you have water it's quite magical Now I'm going to take a knife and let's get some brown and black here. Let's use this brown color. I'm going to add a little more Van Dyke brown. Taking some Van Dyke Brown here in the palette, cut off a roll, start to create where some land would be. Just scraping in where the water line is, keeping with the perspective. Obviously it gets wider as it comes out toward you here. So this brown I'm putting in gets wider here. If you want, you can put a little piece of land right there. You want to leave this quite thick. I'm just laying in this brown mixture. Following the lay of the land. This goes uphill a little bit. And then if I take some white, a little bit of burnt sienna, making a nice highlight color, cut across, start to add a little bit of highlight here, making these stones stick out. Again, I'm following the lay. So the water is going downhill here into this cove or pond. Now I'll tie it together. I'm going to add some color now. So watch what I do here. To make this a bit more golden. a color called Indian yellow. I'll show it to you in a moment. Putting quite a bit on the brush here. I want this quite thick. This is going to be my golden grass. Banging it into the brush here. You really want to use a lot of paint. A lot of paint on that brush. This is where I begin to tap in these flower fields. This 
this kind of ties the land with the uh, with the forest here. We want some of the grass to come down. Make this little peninsula here. Now let's create a water line. Just cleaning my knife off here. using straight liquid white. Again, this separates the land from the water. Camera should be able to pick this up. It's a nice, uh, nice contrast. Now I'm going to lay a little bit more dark at the bottom. By using this large brush, it just makes thousands of details here. Just removing another hair. always changing the hue. I don't want everything to be the same bland green color. So by adding this dark down here at the base, the foreground naturally gets darker as it comes closer. See how by putting that darkness I can push the trees back making these shadows. Watch this here. Can you see? Watch how I create a shadow here. See that bringing that darkness down? That breaks up the hill. Changes the color a little bit. Now if you want to add a little spark of color, which I like at the bottom here because it's a little bit too dark, I'll just go in and highlight a 
these flowers here. And a touch of color always is nice. See how easy that is? This is another really easy painting. There's nothing hard about it. And it's quick. Anyone out there can do this. Very simple painting. Blue sky, a couple white clouds, some brown mountains for today. You have some large green hills here. A couple of pine trees. Forest in the background rolling hills, land, stone, water line, some kind of algae covered pond here, brighter colors in the front. Very simple painting, 18 by 24 inch canvas. Anyone at home can do this, you just have to get the supplies and sit down and make the time. As far as a name for me, To me, this looks like an oasis. Um, valley oasis. Mountains, a lot happening up here, but then you find this forest, and inside this forest is a nice pond area. A lot of animals live here. Very quiet place, no people around. Kind of an oasis of flowers growing where no one sees them. I like it. What are you going to do? Are you going to paint a picture today? Are you going to create something artistic? Are you going to create some music? Or if you don't think you have any type of talent, well, why not spend that time with your family and create some love and some camaraderie with your friends or work at, at work and, and just be a better person. Make some new friends. Use your talent where it lies. If your talent isn't with a brush or a guitar or a piano, let your voice be a talent. We all have that. Let your intellect be a talent. Let your sense of humor be a talent where we can create the world we wish to live in. Doesn't matter how negative the outside world gets as long as my inside is strong. And painting is one way to strengthen that. For now, this is Todd Norcross. I thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next episode of Relaxation Oil Painting.